These are the oldest stories online at oldeststories.net. Today is not when episodes usually come out, but also today is either currently or almost Valentine's Day, depending on your time zone. Some of us are celebrating the holiday with a lover, and others of us are just trying to endure it while all alone. Both togetherness and loneliness go back as far as human history, and so I thought in honor of the Day of Love, we should look at the love of the ancient Mesopotamians in their own words, with poems which potentially go back as far as 4,000 years ago. Our first love poem points right away at the universality of the emotion of love, and tells us that for as long as humans have loved, they have loved in much the same way that we do today. And I should say, if you're less interested in celebrating a love you already have, and more interested in finding out how to get love, the second half of the show will be all about ancient methods for acquiring lovers. Also, all of these texts today are taken from Benjamin R. Foster's fantastic book, Before the Muses. It's one of the best books I have in my library now. Over a thousand pages of translated texts from the Akkadian language, covering pretty much all ancient Akkadian time periods and any subject you could want. It's great for the non-expert who just wants to read ancient texts in English without a whole bunch of hunting or digging through academic discussions. Anyway, our first poem is in the voice of a young woman, and it goes like this. Where has my lover gone, most precious to me? And where has he taken his charms? He's luscious to me as a fruit-laden tree. All my pleasures in him, he's my man. I've sent my lover out of town, so now my daddy's gone. I'll have to make do with my own coo-coo, for my lovebird has flown away. Some trapper must bring my stray lover home, so you can make sweet cooing with me. Or let it be the gardener man to bring me fruit from your tree. I've got the coop ready for the young man. I'll catch the lovebird in one snap. Then when I coo, I'll get around, yes, from my trap. Now this next poem does something that many ancient love poems did. The woman is specifically identified as the goddess Ishtar, and uses details from Ishtar's famous and passionate romance of the shepherd Dumazid. And yet despite this, it's the goddess who's mostly a stand-in for the young woman here. The divine nature of Ishtar plays no role at all. What we have here is perhaps meant to be as much humorous as romantic, for it seems the first 80% of the poem takes place entirely in the young woman's imagination, and the last bit is her stopping her dream and going out to hit on her own young Dumazid. Come in, shepherd, Ishtar's lover. Stay the night, shepherd, Ishtar's lover. When you came in, my father was glad to see you. My mother, Ningal, made a nice fuss over you. She offered rubbing oil from the best dish. When you come in, may the door boat welcome you. Let the door fly open all by itself. You door bolt, you piece of wood, what do you know? What would you know of my lover's coming in? Yes, I'm in love. I'm in love. This good-looking shepherd's the one. He let his dogs roam. What do they know? May I come in to visit Ningal? When he was paying his visit to Ningal, her affianced daughter came in. Mother and daughter come up, cut up sweet cake for him on the best dish. Now, this fellow's a nuisance for dogs and shepherds. Why should they be annoyed with him? He fetched and carried. He came and went, he fetched and carried. A peace offering for the shepherds? This fellow's a nuisance. Numazid is well, thank you, Ishtar's lover. Do take off your sandals. Do take off your quilted cloak. Do, let's eat sweet cake together, good-looking fellow. Do take off your cloak, good-looking fellow. No one else should bring me such joy. Let's eat sweet cake together, good-looking fellow. Never mind the bleating of your lambs. 
Forget the bleating of your sheep. Ignore the noises of the sheepfold. Recite his name to me over and over. He hates to leave. Recite his name to me over and over. He hates to leave. And having imagined all this, Ishtar went out to his sheepfold. She made ready to speak to him and said to him, how lovely are the waters, the waters of your sheepfold, your burbling waters, the waters of your paddock. Now this next poem or tale is a bit different. The first and most obvious difference is that it's written in two voices, male and female. Apparently, there are grammatical differences between how men and women speak that are immediately obvious in Akkadian. Since this is a program in English, I'm going to make it immediately obvious by making silly voices. Also, while this is, I guess technically, a love poem, we can see that the ancients understood that love wasn't always just mooning over beautiful people, and that real hardships, drama, and struggles come into it. We open with a man who's no longer interested in his wife. Goodbye. Don't bother to answer. Not so much talking. What I have to say is said. I haven't changed on your account any opinion that I hold. He who sprawls next to a woman treasures up empty air. If he doesn't look out for himself, he's no man worthy of the name. May my faithfulness stand firm before Ishtar the queen. May my love prevail. May she who slanders me come to shame. Grant me to honor, seduce, to find my darling's favor constantly. I am always ravishing by Nanai's command. Where might my rival be? I remember better than you, your old tricks. Give up. Be off with you. Tell your divine counselor how we've sobered out of it. I'll hang on to you, and this very day I shall make your love harmonize with mine. I shall keep on praying to Nanai. I shall have your eternal goodwill, darling, freely given. I shall keep you fenced in. I shall bank up my clouds around you. May the goddess you trust in take away the cuteness of your salacious talk. Slink off. Accept reality. Oh, you really are a brute. I hear you are cheating on me. Well... May the Queen Ishtar heap oblivion on that woman who doesn't really love you. May she, like me, be burdened with sleeplessness. The whole night may she doze off but start awake. I despise a woman who can't seduce me. I have no desire for her charms. I wouldn't give her anything. Talking without a purpose, what does it accomplish? I'll put a stop to those women who gossip about me. I'll not listen to anyone, wherever they may be speaking. I have thrown away my love. What do you keep prying into me for? The portents for him perturb me. My upper lip grows moist. The lower one trembles. I shall hug him. I shall kiss him. I shall look and look upon him. I shall get what I want against the women who gossip about me and happily return to my lover. When we sleep together, we shall reach our destiny. We will not. I pull away from you each day. I am running, but I cannot catch up with him. My rival gave him away to Ishtar as a gift. Just as they keep telling you, you are not the one and only. Hold off. I've taken my love away. I shall not bring it back. I have taken it away from your body. I have taken my attractions a million leagues away. I am pursuing your charms, darling. I am yearning for your love. Since your smiles are my happiness, let them be plentiful. I hope they won't run out. I will chat a day and night with you. Again, again, and a third time I'll say it. I will let no kind word of you into my mouth. 
Do not take your place at the window. Go on, catch up to my love. So very tired my eyes are. I am weary looking out for him. I keep thinking he'll go through my neighborhood. The day has gone by. Where is my darling? I have no intention of ever returning to my woman. I will stay with my new lover always. I am so sad. The one and only love of my life. Why does he not return to me? Come on, let me take my place. I shall sit and await if he is on his way to me. I swear to you by Nanai and King Hammurabi, I am telling you the truth about me. Your love is nothing more to me than anxiety and bother. They mock me because I still trust my lover. The women who argue with me outnumber the stars of heaven. Let them go hide. Let them contend with each other. Right now, let them go hide. I'll stay right here, ever listening for the voice of my darling. Oh, my good omen. Your face wasn't bad looking before. When I stood by you and you leaned your shoulder against me, I call you Miss Compatible. I'll dub you Smart Lady. Let's go ahead and say the other woman is our ill omen. Ishtar be my witness. So at the very end, it does seem that he had a change of heart based on the lady's fidelity. Would this have been performed? Probably. How would this have been performed? It's not completely clear. All we have is this script. Uh, it is interesting to think that they did have scripts and something resembling plays even back then. Uh, this would have come from about the Cassite period. But uh, the love poems up until now have not exactly been subtle as to their intentions. But the items that follow for the rest of this episode are a bit more explicit. Now, it's important that we not, in our own heads, take these too far in one direction, portraying ancient culture as lustfully sex-obsessed, or as they like to call it nowadays, sex-positive. These poems, while perhaps widely known, would not have been performed in quite the same context as, say, the Epic of Gilgamesh, or even in that same, like that same dialogue that I just read for you. Many of these love poems, and certainly the more explicit ones, would have been recited in a more intimate environment. When we get to the love spells, the magical spells, it's likely that it would have only been the client and the spellcaster, or perhaps the couple and the spellcaster, and the increased explicitness of the poetry is a function of the intimate setting. On the other hand, we should not go too far the other way and assume that they had the same Christian values that our culture has about sex. I've kept this a family-friendly podcast so far, but what follows is something that the ancients were more comfortable with than many of us are today. They were very aware of precisely how the sex act took place, and they were aware of the physical desires that adults experience. All this to say, if you're not old enough to know where babies come from, or if you're perhaps in public, or if you have no particular desire to hear lewd pronouncements of desire, then this is as far as you need to go in this episode. Thank you very much. See, the, see you next time. And honestly, I will say that what follows is not really my sort of thing either, which is why I haven't put it in the show up until now. But it does need to be included for the sake of completeness, because this stuff was a part of the ancient culture, even if it can be hard to contextualize well. And also, I mean, this is part of universal human experience. And if you're not sure what I mean about this, the next poem should make it pretty clear the sort of thing I'm talking about. Your heartbeat is my drum roll. Up then, I want to make love with you. 
in your sweet loins as you come awake. How sweet your caress, how voluptuous your charms. You whose sleeping place wafts of aromatic and fennel. Oh, my loose locks, my earlobes, the contours of my shoulders and the opulence of my breast, the spreading fingers of my hand, the love beads of my waist. Bring your left hand close, touch my sweet spot, fondle my breasts. Oh, come inside, I have opened my thighs. Charming. Now, all of this has been poetry, mostly written by scribes as a literary exercise, though definitely an example of the sort of things that were floating around between lovers or between gossipy folks. It's basically old-timey TikTok. But sometimes merely talking about love wasn't enough for folks. They wanted the real thing, but for one reason or another couldn't get it. I can sympathize strongly with this situation, and for folks like that, there were a number of love spells that could hopefully succeed where charm and seduction had failed. Our first love spell is written for a man to get a woman, and oddly enough is less lustfully explicit than the women's spells, though it, it kind of is a little bit more entitled. This is, this is the uh, Bronze Age patriarchy as it was experienced by an actual man. Love charm, love charm. His horns are of gold. His tail is of pure lapis. It is placed in Ishtar's heart. I called to her, but she did not come back to me. I whistled at her, but she did not look at me. If she is consecrated, may her lover fall. If she has been taken, may her accuser fall. May this marriageable girl, a young lady of good family, fall at my clamor, at my call. May the doe fall from her hands. May the young man fall who's at her side. Don't lock your house against me. Don't even look at the latch string in your hand. Look at me if, as if I were your tether. Lick me over as if I were your newborn calf. Why did you wrap your head with my love like a headband? Tie it around your waist like a belt. Stroke your body with the happy glow of my face as if it were oil. And then what follows from there is a menu of magic spells that have been found on a single set of tablets, probably one owned by a village wizard. Love charms appear to have been big business for village wizards of all ancient peoples. Each would have been accompanied by some sort of magical ritual, and the which would come at the end of each of these incantations, sometimes at the very beginning, as indicated by the clay tablet, but no details are given on what the ritual is. The incantations alone, however, are pretty interesting. The first set of incantations appears to have been a mix of spells for men, for women, and for couples, mostly intended to renew an existing love, perhaps divine marital counseling for the Bronze Age, or sometimes just to uh, elicit lust. Yeah. So the first one is for a lady, and as, as I did previously, the lady's spells will be in a lady's voice, and the man's spells will be in a man's voice. Look at me. Be joyful as a harp. May your heart glow as with liquor. Keep bursting forth like the sun upon me. Keep renewing yourself for me like the moon. May your love ever be new. Ritual follows. Get your legs under way, Arabani. Get your middle in motion. Let your sinews follow after. Let your heart rejoice. Let your spirits be happy. I will swell large as a dog. Like a tether, don't let your passions escape on me. Followed by a love incantation. Stay awake at night. Don't go to sleep in the day. You will not sit down nights. Followed 
by an incantation for virility. Beloved, beloved, you whom Ea and Enlil instilled, you sit on a dais like Ishtar, you sit in a treasure vault like Nanai, I close you in. High priestess love a hot spot, wives despise their husbands. Cut off her stuck-up nose, set her nose under my foot. Just as her love was too high for me, so may my love grow too high for her lover. Followed by an incantation to resolve infidelity. Why are you cruel as a thorn in a thicket? Why is your desire as perverse as a child's? Why is your face so hostile? Why am I invisible? Do not exist. In your heart lies a dog, lurks a pig. You lie down with me, and I'll pluck out your bristle. Get together whatever you have, and give it to me. Incantation of uncertain purpose follows. Now, the rest of the incantations on this tablet are directed more towards inspiring lust. If you were waiting for ancient Mesopotamian pornography, well, here at the end of the show, here it is. And interestingly, all of these were written in the form of a women's speech, suggesting that the main clients for these more erotic spells were unmarried women, or perhaps married women, who are not getting enough attention in the bedroom. Where is your heart going? Where are your eyes looking? Let your heart come to me. Let your eyes look at me. Look at me like you're hungry. Gaze at me like you're hungry. You will hunger for me like bread. You will thirst for me like beer. Love incantation to attract a lover. With dog slaver, thirst, hunger, slap in the face, roll an eye. I have hit you on the head. I have driven you out of your mind. Set your thinking to my thinking. Set your reason to my reason. I'll hold you fast as Ishtar held to Muzid. As liquor binds him who drinks it, I have bound you with my hairy lower mouth, with my vagina full of wetness, with my mouth full of saliva, with my vagina full of wetness, may no rival come to you. Dog is crouching, pig is crouching, you too keep crouching on my thighs. A ritual follows. Arousal, arousal, it keeps its place in its heart. Let me give you cool water to drink. Let me give you ice and coolants. Like a wolf may vigor possess you. Like a lion may splendor possess you. Spring, O oh, arousal of Nanai. Arousal, arousal, he comes upon me like a wild bull. He keeps springing at me like a hound. Like a lion, he is furious in his onset. Like a wolf, he goes where he lusts. I broke the bridge of his heart. I will cross him like a bridge. The Tigris River is under him. Spring, O oh, arousal of Nanai. Arousal, arousal, I will step over you like a threshold. I will traverse you like open ground. Spring, O oh, arousal of Nanai. Incantation using a lump of salt likely to make a woman's husband less impotent. Big mouth, floppy ears, idn damu. Open your mouth like a fish. Open your heart like an unfolding plant. I lapped at your heel. I took the prize. I caught your leg. Cuddle me like a puppy. Mount me like a dog. Incantation using a soap plant. I have hit you on the head. You will squirm around me on the ground like a snake. You will roll on the ground like a pig until I have my way like a child. 
The incantation for this goes, Garlic sticks up its own stalk. The ox raises up its own rod. As river poured over its banks, I pour magic over myself. I pour magic over my body. I have opened my seven doors for you, Arabani. Bring the constant gnawing of your heart to an end on me. And with that, I bid you all a happy Valentine's Day. Or if it isn't Valentine's Day when you listen to this, I bid you a happy love life. And if your love life isn't happy, I hope that you can win your heart's desire with either some of this poetry or some of these magic spells. Anyway, this was sort of thrown together at the last minute, and we will have the next episode of The Ball Cycle, The Feast of Ball, coming out at the normal time on February 23rd. Thank you for listening.